Welcome, everybody. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, whew, the fire of God just fell off. <laughs> For those of you that are just joining us now, we've spent the last two and a half hours praying, standing in the gap for our nation and for all the things going on in the world. And we're just excited because we're already hearing good reports coming forth. So God is good. Um, I'm going to just a couple of announcements. Uh, don't forget, we have the cruise that's scheduled for November 3rd through the November 9th going out of Galveston. If anybody's interested in that, they can just go to our website, DonnaRigney.org, and just click on the events page, and that flyer will come up. You just click on that, it'll bring you right to Heavenly Cruises' website, and you'll be able to sign up there if you're interested in that. It's going to be powerful, powerful. It's a glory explosion. There's going to be, it's going to be all focused on the glory of God, which is what I love. <laughs> glory so that's going to be uh november 3rd through the 9th and all the rest of our events are on the events page you can check that out we have other things uh there as well also if you want any prophetic books i have two prophetic books on the website i also have a book that i wrote about for people that have been wounded by the church and you know i think that if you're in a congregation it happens uh, generally, you'll find that there are a lot of people that have been hurt or wounded or disappointed by the church. And it's a book called Abused by the Church, and it really helps people to uh, get over the feeling alone in it. And, oh, and it helps them to uh, forgive, move on, but then get settled in to a church safely. And, and it's, it's an, an excellent book for that. Uh, these other two books that I've written are called Divine Encounters and the Glory of God Revealed. Divine Encounters is the first book I wrote, and this one's about uh, visitations I had in hell and in heaven. So uh, and they're very detailed. The Lord brought me many times to both places and would have me write down everything I saw and what he was saying to me as he brought me through the different places. I learned so much on these visitations. Uh, and then he continued taking me to heaven. So this is a sequel, the, is The Glory of God Revealed, where he brought me a lot of times to heaven, to a special mountain there. So if you're a glory seeker, and I think we all are at this point in our lives, this is a special place that he has in heaven reserved for those who sought his glory when they were on the earth. So you'll learn all about that and that. And I also have a CD set, Soaking in the Glory, uh, and I teach you how, what the glory is, how to encounter the glory, and how to marinate, soak in the glory, and to be transformed by the glory of God. So those are available on my website, DonnaRigney.org. Now I'm going to get into the word. Oh, uh, this word, the Lord spoke to me today. And it was really, really, really powerful. And while we were praying tonight here, so many of the prayers that everyone was praying were the part of the words that God gave me. Was When you hear the word, you're going to be like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is what we prayed. <laughs> so what happened was I went into the spirit and I saw myself in the garden of glory. And there's a big swing there. There's a garden swing there that I sit on when I go and visit. And the father's on one side of me and Jesus is on the other side. And then this visitation I was swinging high, high, like a little child swinging on a swing and just laughing and having a good time. And, and then uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said, good days are coming. So it was like I was just like a kid enjoying himself. And it was a picture of how we're going to be feeling in the days ahead. That God's got good days for us. Okay. So he said, good days are coming. Lots of good days and good times for the righteous. So he said, good days are coming. And then he, then he repeated it. Lots of good days are coming for the righteous. Okay. <sighs> he said, not so for the self-righteous or the corrupt. They will know my just judgments as the innocent are publicly vindicated and they receive their just sentences. 
So he said that during this time, the righteous are going to be publicly vindicated. That God's going to publicly, and I knew when he was saying this, there were so many people that we've seen publicly humiliated and publicly accused. Donald Trump, top of the list, but then there's many others. There's all those that have been in prison from January 6th. Many, many people have been falsely accused, and God's saying they're going to be publicly, publicly vindicated. Okay? <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the ones that have been wicked and corrupt are going to receive just sentences. Okay? So both things are coming. He said, many will be exposed in the days and the hours ahead. And when he said that days and hours, I knew he was saying it's going to happen really soon. We've heard this word that the, the righteous are going to be blessed and they're going to be vindicated and the wicked are going to be prosecuted many times. But when he said that in the days and hours ahead, I knew it's going to happen soon. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Both the good will have their righteousness revealed for all to see and the wicked will have all their wicked deeds exposed. None will escape justice. So he said, that's what's coming in the days ahead. And, you know, he said, you're going to have, for the righteous, those, none of us are perfect. Like, God isn't saying for the perfect. But for those who accept Jesus as their Savior, have repented of their sins, their sins are forgiven. They're under the blood. And we have the righteousness of God on us. We have Jesus' righteousness. That he's... He's made an exchange. He says, I'll take your sins. Now here, you can have my righteousness. you be cloaked in my righteousness. Those that have the righteousness of Christ on them, he said, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to enjoy the days ahead that are coming. Oh, ha. this, I was so encouraged after he spoke this word to me. And he said, vindication is coming to Donald Trump and to all who have been falsely accused. Even those who have been in prison since January 6th. Vindication is going to come to them. God's saying, I'm, I'm going to come and rescue them. They will be exonerated, freed, and granted recompense. Oh, uh, oh God is just. Yeah. He said, those who knowingly falsely accuse them will fall in the pit they dug for the innocent. Now, do we know by just, I mean, just watching the news, you can see this, that they were, it's coming out more and more and more in the news that these, those that were conducting these January 6th inquiries, well, they knew stuff and they hid it that would have exonerated the people and exonerated Donald Trump. But knowingly, they falsely accuse them. And he says, they're going to fall into the pit they dug for them. Oh, ha. He said, times are changing. Oh, ha. So, you know, the, the Lord had spoken to me a few weeks ago that the wind of change is blowing. And he said again now, times are changing. We're coming into a new season. We've been suffering for a number of years. And, and God knows that. He knows every second that we've been suffering. And he, he's saying, now there's going to be a change. And it's going to be a time where you're going to start enjoying your life. Oh, ha, 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 oh, time of enjoyment is coming. Times of refreshing. Times where justice is going to rule. We are getting sick of injustice. Just sick of it. And God knows that. So he said, times are changing. And then he explained how this change is going to come about. By the outpouring of my spirit, this will happen. So the changes that he just spoke about of justice are going to happen by the outpouring of his spirit. So what did we pray for tonight for quite a bit at a time? For the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. For the glory of God to be poured out all over the world. That's, that, that's our hope. That's what we need. We need God's presence more than anything else. When I went to North Carolina last week and was ministering there, 
the Lord said to me, North Carolina needs my glory more than they need anything else. Oh, more than godly leaders, more than laws changed, they need my presence. And that's for all of us all over the world. He said, as I pour out my goodness, righteousness will be exposed, celebrated, and rewarded. So as he pours out his goodness, his glory is his goodness, it's his presence. Okay? So he says, as I pour out my goodness, righteousness is going to be exposed. The light of my glory is going to cause an elevation of righteousness for people to see the righteous deeds, the good things that my children have been doing. They're going to be exposed for everybody to see. Oh. <laughs> and not only will they be exposed, celebrated, they will be rewarded too. Okay? God says he's going to pour rewards upon his children. While at the same time, wickedness will be seen for what it is and deemed repulsive by the masses. And I heard the word repulsive. People are going to see evil and they're going to be repulsed by what they see. For too long, the enemy's been deceiving us and we've been thinking evil is good and good is evil. Oh, that's, that's the deception of the enemy. He's been using leaders and the media and Hollywood, different things like that to deceive people into thinking evil is good and good is evil. And God's saying, in this hour, when I pour out my goodness, my glory, evil will be seen for what it is, and it will be repulsive. People will be repulsed by what they see of the evil. When, pe when we see the evil that's been done to children, we will be repulsed. When we see evil that's been done to innocent people huh, worldwide, we will be repulsed by it. Champions of righteousness will be celebrated, honored, and restored to their rightful positions. He said champions of righteousness. There's some people that God considers champions of righteousness. We've got a lot of different ministers we've been listening to on YouTube for the last few years. And I consider a lot of them champions of righteousness. Huh? Hank Kuhneman. Huh? Yeah. Dutch Sheets, so many, so many champions of righteousness. We also have some leaders that we know are champions of righteousness. And then he said, I speak of Donald Trump, but not only him. So when he said champions of righteousness, he was referring to Donald Trump. But he said, but not only him. <laughs> There were many who had their seats of authority in all seven mountains of influence taken from them. So he said there were many that had, we've seen, you know, that's right there with Donald Trump, but there are many that had their seats. If you look just at the election, there were so many, you're like, how did that person not get in? How could that have happened? Huh? How could people have voted? So contrary to just common sense. But he's saying not just in that area, but also in the realm of finances, huh? In the realm of entertainment, the media. We're, we're, we've just been, there's just been such a switch where people that are ungodly and unrighteous are sitting in seats of authority dictating to us what's right and what's wrong. School committees, we're just seeing it across the board in every area, all, he said all seven mountains, this has happened in. But God's saying it's gonna change. It's gonna change and it's gonna change soon and quickly. He said, oh, I'm gonna read again what he said. Champions of righteousness will be celebrated, honored and restored to their rightful positions I speak of Donald Trump, but not only him. There were many who had their seats of authority in all seven mountains of influence taken from them. Stripped of their rightful positions, not only did they lose their rightful inheritance, but those 
who they would have served lost the benefits that come to those who have righteous rulers. So God's saying the people that lost their positions lost a lot. But my people who they were appointed to serve, our leaders appointed to a service. The greatest of all is the servant of all. God's called leaders to serve. He said, but the people that they would have served lost much. We've been on unrighteous, under unrighteous rule for a long time, and we have suffered. We've suffered in our pocketbooks. huh? We've suffered with our health. We've suffered with so many restrictions put upon us. A lot of people lost jobs, lost homes, lost finances, lost loved ones. We have suffered a lot because unrighteous rulers have taken the seats of the righteous. And we've been under that. And God said, I've had it. Enough of this. Enough. Things are going to change. When my justice is poured out, not only will those stolen rulers receive their just due. So he said, when my justice is, when he pours out his glory, it's his presence. And God is just. God is love. So what's going to be poured out? Justice, love, peace, joy. huh? All of God's attributes are going to be poured out all over the world. So he says, when I pour my glory out, my justice is going to be poured out. Do we need that? We've been crying out, God, we want justice. <sighs> when my justice is poured out, not only will those stolen rulers receive their just due, but so will those they were called and appointed by us to lead, they shall receive their just due. So God's saying, not only will those that had their seats stolen from them receive their just due, but those that they were appointed to rule will receive their just due. When Donald Trump gets back in, you can kind of read between the lines. What is God saying? We're going to be blessed. During the four years that he was president, that God appointed him, put him in that position. No man did. God did. Called him, appointed him. Miraculously, he got in. Oh, we had four years of prosperity and blessing. The people he was over, that he, and he served us. He didn't serve himself. He didn't make himself wealthy by being in office. He, he served the people. We were blessed for those four years. And God's saying this is going to happen again. When those righteous rulers are put back in their positions, Donald Trump, yes, but not just him, then he said, my people are not going to groan anymore. My people are going to rejoice and going to live blessed. <laughs> I say, the transfer of wealth will come to our ch children during this outpouring of justice. The transfer of wealth oh, ha, ha, is going to come. Oh, ha. As he pours his glory out, his justice, huh? his peace, his love, huh? everything good, God's generosity, huh? his graciousness, as that's all poured out upon us, he said, that's when the transfer of wealth is going to come. Hallelujah. Good. Yay. Have you got faith for it? Yes. You, I'm telling you, you receive what you believe. Yes. Oh, let's let our faith arise. If God's saying, I'm going to bless you. Oh, and the wealth of the unjust is going to fall on you. Oh, I believe it. I receive it. I, amen. Amen. God is God. Okay, <laughs> he said, um, all that was stolen must be restored sevenfold. So this transfer of wealth is justice coming forth from the, for those who have been stolen from. Seven times what was stolen from us. Once the thief, scripture tells us, once the thief has been found out, 
he must restore seven times what he stole. Oh, and God is saying, because you've been stolen from, justice is coming. There's going to be a transfer of wealth. You're going to get back seven times what you lost. Ho, ha, ho. Just in taxes alone. I think about it. How much we've lost. But there's been so much more. He said, all that was stolen must be restored sevenfold. And then he listed things. Freedom. Have we lost our freedom? Yes, we have. Finances, positions, homes, destinies, families, reputations. Those are things that we've been stolen. We see that from the people that are in authority. They lost this, lost their position. They lost that. But God said, you lost it too. And he said, it's going to be restored to you sevenfold. And, and I just feel like God wants our faith because the only thing that limits God is unbelief. It said that when Jesus ministered in his hometown, because of the people's unbelief, because, oh, that's just Jesus, the carpenter's son. They were familiar with him. They just, they didn't believe that God could be using him, that he was the son of God. <laughs> and so it said he could do only a few miracles in his hometown. He was limited. He couldn't heal hardly anybody. Because of their unbelief. What limits God from blessing us? Unbelief. And he's, I just know in this hour, he wants us to be filled with faith. Yeah. He said, I don't want you to have a stagnant faith, but I want you to have a lively faith. Oh, ha, because I am so frustrated by what's been happening to you. I want to bless you. Oh, ha. Don't limit me with unbelief. Oh, don't doubt that I can do this. Don't doubt that I want to do this. Don't doubt that I'm able to do this. I'm God. I'm mighty. I'm the God that just spoke a word and creation came to be. When I said, let there be light, the sun, the moon, and the stars were created. I'm a mighty God. This is what he's saying. I'm a mighty God. Put your trust and your hope and your faith in me. Don't put your trust and your faith and your hope in the enemy that's been stealing from you. Oh, ha. he's under my feet. I'm going to make him give back to you seven times what he took from you. Believe it so I can do it. Oh, ha. Oh, ha. He said, there will be great celebrations in the streets. Ha. <laughs> oh. He said, there will be great celebrations in the streets as I bring forth justice by the outpouring of my glory. How's he going to do it? He's going to do it by pouring out his glory. He's going to expose the wickedness and the evil by pouring out his glory. He's going to expose the good by pouring out his glory. He's going to bring forth the wealth of the unjust to us, reward us, bless us, recompense us, by the outpouring of his glory. <laughs> What's his glory? His presence. His presence. Okay. It will feel like heaven is raining delightful gifts to the children who have suffered much at the hands of those who serve Satan and his horde of demons. And that's what I felt when he was saying this. I could feel like gifts being poured out from heaven, like the heavens were open and it was just raining down all the blessings that we need to make us happy. Huh? Just raining down even a restoration of relationships, huh? Salvation to our loved ones, raining down health, huh? So that we're not racked with pain and sick and weak, huh? Raining down mental health, good, sound minds to our loved ones, huh? Raining down wisdom, knowledge, so many things, everything that's good and perfect. God says, I'm going to rain down on you, pour down on you. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs>
I'm going to repeat that again. There will be great celebrations in the streets. I, you know, the buildings aren't going to be able to be big enough to house all the people that are rejoicing and celebrating. They're going to have to go on the streets and take to the streets and dance and celebrate and rejoice in such gratitude for God for what he's doing for them. Okay? It will feel like heaven is raining delightful gifts to the children who have suffered much at the hands of those who serve Satan and his horde of demons. My resurrection power is in my glory. Okay? His resurrection power, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, is in the glory. All right? So he said, when I pour my glory out, I am pouring my resurrection power out on your lives. That which was dead, which was discouraged, oh, was forlorn and beaten. Oh, huh. I'm pouring resurrection power. My resurrection power is in my glory. All that the enemy killed will be raised back to life when I pour out my glory. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. relationships he killed. Ho, oh, parts of our bodies he killed. Huh? Ho, oh, oh. our wealth that got killed and stolen from us. Ho, oh, oh. raised back to life. Dead faith will be resurrected. And I, I, I feel that we've been through such a time of discouragement that the enemy's trying to rob us of our faith and our tr trust in God. And he's saying, dead faith will be resurrected. Oh, <laughs> as will love, life, joy, enjoyment in life. The enemies tried to rob us of enjoyment of life. There's so many worries and this can happen and that's going to happen. And what if this, you know, that it's robbed us of enjoyment for life. And that's not what God created us to. He said, Jesus came to give us life, life to the fullest. He wants us to enjoy our lives. He's a good father that gave his son for us. Oh, uh, so we could have full, happy lives. God says, I'm going to restore that. As I pour my glory out, you're going to get enjoyment back in your life. You're going to start enjoying your life. We're going to be laughing, having fun. Like I was in this vision that I saw myself laughing, 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 riding on a swing, just having a wonderful time. Oh, ha, that enjoyment's going to come back to our lives. <laughs> and then he said, all that is good, Produces full happy lives will be raised back to life. All that is good. And then I'm just going to end with a couple of scriptures. All right. Romans 8. Oh. Starting in verse 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised, raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. So if the spirit of Jesus who raised Jesus back to life lives inside of us, God's saying, I'm going to bring that life to you, that supernatural resurrection to you, to those areas that are dead. Okay? Ho, 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 ha. Are you thinking of things in your life that needs a little bit of a touch of resurrection? God says, that's coming. And things that you didn't even think of. <laughs> I'm even going to go there. <laughs> He's Jehovah Sneaky, you know. He loves to give us surprises. <laughs> and then I'm just going to, one more scripture. <laughs> and then we're going to worship. <laughs> this was a, uh, Psalm 24 uh, that the Lord had spoken to me uh, back in 2023 and I was reading Psalm 23 uh, and he told me, he said, read Psalm 24 because that's what I'm going to do in 2024. Okay, so this was back maybe in September, October of 
2023. So today he told me, read Psalm 24 again. All right? So I'm going to read it. It, it just says, this is what I'm going to do in 2024. All right? <laughs> the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. He's coming to take the earth back. I, I had a vision a few weeks ago, and he was showing me, teaching me about the glory. And I saw the world, and I saw Jesus, and he was enormous. And he just got the world, and he hugged the world, and he just drew it close to his heart, the whole globe. And he just, he, and he said, this is a picture of my glory. When I pour my glory out on the whole world, the whole world is going to feel like I'm hugging them. They're going to feel my love. They're going to feel my touch. Oh, when I go around and I release the glory on everybody tonight, you're going to feel the love of Jesus. You're going to feel his glory, his presence touching you. But he doesn't want it just contained to a room full of people. He wants the whole world to experience his great love. Huh? So, so that's what's coming. All right. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. God made it. It's his. And the enemy, sneaky, trying to take it away from God by our relinquishing the earth back to, to the devil by following him. Okay? Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in idols or swear by a false god. He's saying, my children, my righteous children, are going to ascend my mountain, sit in my presence, and come before me. Okay? They will receive blessing from the Lord. Ho, oh, ha, ha. Isn't that what he was talking to me about today? My children are going to get blessed. Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, those that love me, those that serve me, oh, uh, those that have the righteousness of my son upon them, they're going to be blessed. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Oh, uh, didn't he say those that have been unjustly accused like Donald Trump and those in January 6th and many others are going to be vindicated. Ho, ha, I'm going to declare them innocent. Ho, ha, ha, for all to see. Ho, ha. So this is what he's told me back in 2023. This is what I'm going to be doing in 2024. Vindication is going to come. Blessings are going to come for those that love God. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Oh, ah, the presence of God, the king of glory, is going to come in and it's going to invade the whole world. Oh, this is what he's doing this year. Not 10 years from now. This year. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Oh, lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Let every nation in the world lift up their gates. Huh? Let the king of glory come in. Huh? Every household, every home. Oh, let the king of glory come in. What's he going to do? He's going to bless us. He's going to restore us. He's going to loose his resurrection power upon us. He's going to vindicate us. Oh, ha. he's going to defend us. Oh, ha. he's going to bring forth justice. Oh, ha, ha, ha. who is this king of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. Oh, we're going to take communion now. Oh, with a heart of gratitude. God has a plan. God has a plan to rescue us. He had a plan to rescue us 2,000 years ago. He sent his son to the earth. That was a great rescue event. He came. Jesus came to the earth. Who could imagine what a plan God had? That he would 
have his son leave heaven, come to the earth, live amongst us, take our sins as if he committed them, take our punishment, offer up a perfect sacrifice to the Father for our sins, confess our sins before the Father, give us freedom from those sins, Open the gates of heaven. No one was allowed in heaven. Open the gates of heaven so that when we die, we would have eternal life and live forever with him in his kingdom. So God said, I did that 2,000 years ago. That was my rescue event that I had. I got another rescue event for you. Oh, oh, oh. I have a rescue event planned for this hour where I'm going to pour my spirit out. I'm pouring my glory out. I'm pouring my presence out. I'm pouring my resurrection power out. And I'm going to change the world. Ho, ho, ho. Jesus changed the world when he came. He changed the world. A, everything was after Christ. B.C., before Christ, after Christ. He changed the world. And God says, this rescue event, again, I will change the world. Yes. Ho, ha, ha. Let's take communion with gratitude and faith. Faith that what Jesus wants to do for us, he can do it. Because we believe. Jesus, thank you. Thank you so much that you didn't say no to the Father when he asked you to come to the earth. You knew. You would be spit on, you would be abused, you would be rejected. You knew the price you had to pay to set us free from our sins and to open heaven for us. And you, you said yes. We come to you today and we say thank you with hearts of gratitude. Thank you. We thank you for the plan you have now to rescue us once again. We thank you. Oh, ha for the wonderful miracles you're going to be doing all over the world. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We take this communion tonight, consecrating ourselves to you and saying, I believe. I believe in you and I believe in your power and in your goodness and in your resurrection power. And I receive all that you're planning to pour out on me. Thank you, Jesus. Now we take the cup, the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the power that's in your blood. That we're saved by your blood. We're healed by your blood. We're delivered by your blood. We're protected by your blood. Oh, ha! That our world is transformed by your blood. We thank you. We receive this cup tonight and saying, Lord, do it. Do whatever you need to do to bring about your grand rescue event. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to release the glory now. Lord, but just, just let your faith arise so we can worship in the glory. And then after we worship, I'm going to come around at the end of worship and release the glory on every single person. But for now, I want you to receive the glory so you can worship in the glory. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory. Oh, ha. I release your glory, Father. Oh, Rabasa. I release your glory. Oh, Mashiriata. I release your glory on every single one of us. Oh, Rabasa. I release your glory on our households. Oh, on our loved ones. Oh, Rabasikia. I release your glory. Oh, Rabasitia. Ha, ho, ha. I release your glory, Lord. He, Kiata, Shasa, Rabasa, Koma, Satasha. Wrap us. Wrap us in your arms of love. Hold us close to your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.